Hey folks, welcome to RBL Studios. I'm Jerry Stevenson, the ch chief redneck in charge at the Redneck Barbecue Lab in Gee's Crossroad, Vincent, North Carolina. We're here today to show you folks how to make smoked beef fajitas at home, just like I do at mine. Before we get started here, I'd like for you guys to uh, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're not doing it right now, and share this YouTube channel with your friends. We're doing this not only to give back to you guys, just a little bit of the love we have for cooking food, but to inspire you to do things as well, and hopefully you guys can pass this on to somebody else. And as always, leave your comments as to what you thought about this video, suggestions as to other things you'd like to see us do in the future, uh, video-wise here on this YouTube channel. So without delay, we'll get into this uh, smoked beef fajita recipe that I have. Um, beef fajitas for me, uh, started out as uh, the restaurant chain stuff where they come out on the sizzling platter um, and later evolved to the Tex-Mex style restaurants that we had here in North Carolina until a further evolution of me heading down south, uh, Texas, years and years and years ago to do a restaurant job that I had down there and discovering that my fajitas that I had here weren't quite what I was eating down there and there was quite a variation of it. But one thing that I did learn was, was there were several different ways to basically make these beef fajitas and not one in particular was the right way, although it's kind of like barbecue sauce, I guess. There's that perfect fajita out there too based on what region and stuff. But um, this is something that we started playing around with a, a while back, and it's something that we've come to enjoy. Uh, it's easy to prep. You can do it, like I said, with your kids, with your spouse, significant other, um, and kind of make it into a family-style affair, or just do it by yourself. So to begin with, the uh, beef fajita meat that we will be using today is a skirt steak, and the skirt steak is basically the diaphragm muscle. It's a very tender, a uh, piece of meat, but it's very lean. And what that means in terms of cooking is, is that you can ruin this thing real quick. So typically this is grilled over a high heat, really fast to basically cook it to a rare, medium rare type temperature, um, just to keep it from tightening up and, and basically becoming uh, like rubber bands, chewing Russian rubber bands. So we're gonna approach this a little bit different. We're gonna actually kind of do a reverse sear on a pellet smoker with this. And reverse sear means basically we're gonna start at a lower temperature smoking it to impart a little bit of that smokiness flavor. And then we're gonna jack that thing up just as high as it'll go. And we're gonna hit it with an intense heat very, uh, right at the very end to kind of crisp up some of those proteins that's weeped out on the outside to kind of set that pellicle on the outside and create a little bit of crunch, a little bit of texture and stuff. So. Um, let me show you the first thing that we do. Um, and to give you a little heads up on this recipe, this is a recipe that takes days to do. And, and the reason it takes days to do is we like to marinate this. Uh, a lot of recipes will go for days. My recipe that I'm getting ready to show you guys here can be an overnight to 24 hours, 48 hours. It doesn't really matter. Thing is, it just kind of needs to set uh, in a refrigerator by itself for a little while and kind of let the chemical reactions occur between the meat and the spices that we're putting on it. So first thing we're going to do is, is I've got a little bit of oil. Uh, my oil of choice is always like a canola oil, a neutral type oil um, for doing stuff like this. I, I do use olive oil, um, you know, for some searing stuff, but um, just a neutral oil is really what you want on this. You don't want anything that imparts any like kind of strong flavor because you want the beef to come out as well as this rub we're getting ready to put on it. The rub that we're using here today is um, our uh, Redneck Barbecue Lab uh, all-purpose rub that, to get you a bottle out here to show you. Our Redneck Barbecue Lab all-purpose rub um, is the thing that we put on everything, and literally we do put it on everything. It's the one that, uh, like I said, I put it on popcorn and potatoes. We're gonna be using that here today uh, to season these fajitas. But what I have done here is I put in here four ounces of this Redneck Barbecue Lab, Rab, Lab Rub, say that tongue twister, into a um, dredge shaker here. And I have added a teaspoon of ground cumin to this. Um, that's one of the background flavors that kind of gives a little Tex-Mex type pop there, as well as I added an eighth tablespoon of cayenne pepper. And I know a lot of people are like, whoa, you're trying to blow my doors down with the cayenne. Not so much, the cayenne pepper will mellow out 
um, over the cooking process. It's not as hot as what it is. The longer you cook pepper, the sweeter a lot of times a lot of it becomes. And that, that sweetness in the background will also contribute a little bit of heat, but it's going to give it a very kind of interesting flavor as well. So that's what I did in the shaker. Gave it a good shake. And now I'm going to go ahead and start sticking it onto this uh, skirt steak. Y'all that subscribe to this channel already know how much I love having a pan to do this in. Um, those, that you, those that you don't subscribe to this channel, and this is your first time watching, thank you for watching. Um, you also know the reason why I do this is I love cooking in pans for the cleanup, and this is awesome, you know, especially if I'm doing this in a kitchen that I share with someone, and uh, that someone doesn't really want me uh, destroying their kitchen while making uh, my dishes. You know, enjoy eating them, but they probably don't really like to uh, see me destroy their kitchens making stuff. Other reasons I like cooking in pans is, is later on, um, we'll actually put these uh, uh, pans, we'll actually put the fajitas in pans on a rack and cook them as well. And uh, that will um, kind of elevate the, the, the meat off of the cooking surface, off this aluminum pan and it will allow the air to convection heat to kind of go around it and, and get 360 degree coverage on that. And then as well, it goes back to is keeping my smoker nice and clean. Um, a dirty smoker is, is a dirty smoker. A lot of people say, oh, that's seasoning. You know, the bits and pieces and the fat and stuff that fall off that uh, eventually turn into uh, what they think is seasoning is really creosote. And uh, creosote is that arch enemy of the barbecue folks out here um, because it will create a, uh, a negative flavor. It will give a really bitter type flavor uh, to something. It can ruin um, what you're cooking on a smoker. So just keep your pits clean. All right, now that this is done, I will go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap. Put this in a refrigerator. Like I said, we can go 12 hours to 36 hours. I've done it for two days ahead of time and let it sit. It's not gonna ruin or anything like that. It's not gonna get too intense, anything. Um, it would just help, like I said, the chemical process of kind of the uh, proteins coming out and some salt going into this meat to help keep the moisture in and stuff. And like, it's just a good thing. So please do it. Don't, don't skip this step. Um, but it, it is an important one. Uh, the next thing that uh, I will go ahead and do as well, and I usually do it the same day that I, I'm doing the, um, the skirt steak, is I will go ahead and prepare my... Uh, Fajita vegetables. Typically fajita vegetables, um, well typically for me, the fajita vegetables was a green pepper and onion um, kind of mixture. And I'm not a huge green and onion fan, but what I have found out is over the years is I do like the poblano pepper um, or the uh, Anaheim pepper. Uh, it's a little, it's, it's less intense, less grassy than a bell pepper, less astringent you know, to me, um, it imparts a really good pepper flavor to it. And the poblano versus the, the green pepper, I think, in my opinion, it takes smoke a lot better for some reason. And it takes a lot better when uh, this is smoked in a smoker versus uh, bell pepper, bell pepper for some reason. I, I think I used to eat these things as a kid and I just got kind of tired of it. Um, we'll go ahead and knock these out, show you what I do with these. Uh, I began by just kind of this is something I do. I don't know if I've ever seen it. I just kind of go around the outside and kind of take the cap off like that. And it allows me to kind of reach in with the stem, give it a little shake, and it helps me, whew, boy, pull out the uh, stem, stem and seeds. Um, go ahead and get the uh, pepper prep ready to kind of cut into strips. Um, the seeds um, and the stem I found, uh, they are uh, non-digestible and they don't really add any flavor or anything to the uh, finished product. So just go ahead and get them out of there. If you guys have watched our uh, past videos on uh, our stuffed uh, peppers that we've done or the videos um, that, that we have done recently with the uh, stuffed jalapeno peppers, um, that's one of the things you may wanna go down here and check out. Um, and if they're not there right now, you may wanna go on here and subscribe and hit that little bell button because they will pop up here shortly um, at some point and you'll know when they come out, but you'll know how adamant I am about removing those seeds. I, I think a lot of times I, I kind of go back to it. I'm a little OCD um, 
with my approach to cooking and, and in life in general, I guess. And this is just one of the other little things. I just have to remove these seeds. <sighs> it's either that or might have been my mother. I don't know. That would be a Freudian thing there, I guess, to, to say. Love you, Mom. I mean it. I know you didn't teach me how to do this. So once we got these peppers seeded and got the ribs out of them, we're going to go ahead and um, just basically make these into strips. And we're talking strips or quarter inch strips. Um, and these will become, like I said, uh, useful in the next step that I'll be showing you with our fajitas. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into strips, throw these into a pan. Try not to lop my finger off. You guys just have those kind of days sometimes when it's like, what can go wrong will go wrong. Ooh, I think this is one of those days. Definitely, definitely need these fingers later on. I have a question sometimes about what knives I use. I kind of change them up. Um, I found that uh, here lately I've been going to these shun knives. Um, the shun knife is a Japanese knife. Uh, this particular model, I don't really know which one it is, uh, but it's a, basically a six inch blade. And I found um, that it's like one of my kind of go-tos here, really well weighted, um, feels good in the hand. I know that sounds kind of silly sometimes to say it feels really good in hand, but I know a lot of times with, with me, it's uh, my confidence in cooking it always starts with my tools, be it uh, my Royal Oak charcoal that I'm adamant about using, you know, in all my smokers or the backwood smoker that I love, um, the Traeger grills that I go to that I'm very confident in about putting something in and uh, just letting, letting the meat be in there all night uh, without worrying about it messing up or the fire going out and stuff like that. And I've found that uh, here cooking, probably this last decade, I found how important it, it was to get, get rid of those cheap knives that I used to have and find something that was uh, not only um, something that kind of gave me confidence in cooking, but as well as something that I'd have forever. You know, I mean, these knives, um, right now in our economy, it seems like in our, our world when we buy stuff, it's a, a disposable income out there. It's like we buy something, I buy a washing machine and hey, in five years, you're gonna throw it away and get a new one where you know, our parents' generation or grandparents' generation, it was more about um, buying something and fixing it. You know? So anyway, that's my little knife rant today. Uh, next thing I wanna do with these is, is I wanna go ahead and cut these into the same width slices, some quarter inch uh, slices. Uh, this is a sweet onion that I have. I um, basically cut it in half, and once I cut it in half, I um, went ahead and uh, peeled it, got it to this point, and I'll go ahead and take the uh, petals apart. I throw out the middles a lot of times if they're you know not gonna fall apart. Kinda just wanna get these um, separated for the next step, which I'll show you, which is basically I'm going to season these and put these on a smoker. Um, tomorrow when we get this this uh, meat uh, marinated overnight. It knocked that off too. A little bit, a bit of skin left. All right. It's just another Manic Monday. Oh. Kind of hints to my age when you start singing the bangle songs. Hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right. Not dazed to confuse today, but kind of got that Matthew McConaughey thing going on as well. Okay, we have got this knocked out. Let's go ahead and I'll show you another little thing. Um, this is what I would do right before I go to throw these into the smoker. Uh, I would go ahead and I'd hit these with just some cooking spray. The uh, cooking spray basically Vegetables I found um, they don't give off uh, fat; um, they give off water, and a lot of times the oil will help our rubs that we're using kind of stick together, um, stick to this a little bit more, and adhere versus falling off. And I think it's kind of important to have this uh, this oil on there. 
Um, we're gonna hit them with the same, uh, basically the redneck barbecue lab uh, fajita seasoning that we just made that we put on our fajitas. We'll give them a good dose. And once we've got them like that, we'll go ahead and put these with our steaks. Um, like I said, you can do all of this ahead of time and have it ready for uh, you to go ahead the next day and prepare um, for cooking. So once we have all this prep, uh, we will go ahead, like I said, throw this into the refrigerator, leave it overnight, and then we will begin uh, the process of putting this together. Now, speed things up. I've gone ahead and got everything prepped and ready to go. This is our skirt steak that we have marinated overnight. We've got it. Man, it smells good. It's just beefy, smelly, like uh, flavor. Kind of running out of space right here, so I we'll have to consolidate a little bit. All right, as you can see, it's, it's sweated a lot and it started to release, like I said, those proteins on the inside have started to come out and some of that salt's gone down to kind of help marinate it. And um, more importantly, the salt will actually get drawn into the meat and that salt will help the water molecules stay in the meat versus trying to escape when the heat's applied to it. So this, like I said, that's one of the important things. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and cut these uh, fajitas up um, into, I'm gonna cut them into three different strips and I'll show you why that's important next. So I'm gonna cut them into like three equal type parts. Then we're going to take some of our peppers and put some of our peppers in here. I'm trying to use the old clean hand, dirty hand, but it's not gonna last too long. You'll see why here in a little bit. We're gonna put some of our peppers in here that we have cooked. Now the peppers, one of the things I didn't tell you was, is I showed you guys how to um, prepare the peppers and, and uh, spray them down and put the seasoning on. But what I didn't tell you was, is I went ahead and threw, when I was heating up uh, my smoker, I went ahead and put these in there um, while the smoker was heating up and getting up to temperature. And I, I kind of gave them a head start on getting softened and getting a little bit of smoke on the inside because this on this next step you'll see why it's important to kind of give these a little cook on the outside a little little smoke on the outside before we put these on and let's put some onion come on onions don't want to go the right way the combination already just smells wonderful um these uh, onions have a lot of, lot of smoke and then combined with the pepper, uh, I've said it before, reminds me of walking down the midway at a, um, at a fair and smelling that uh, fragrance of the Italian sausages that the uh, food vendors there cook. You can just smell it before you even get there and all you, all you can smell is, is just that wonderful aroma and that sausage and, and uh, your salivation glands start going along with your nose at the same time and then your stomach takes over and tells you which way to go. <laughs> All right, so next step, what we want to do with these is we want to take these and we're going to actually roll them up. Um, the reason I do this is the outside of this skirt steak, uh, the, it's thinner than the inside and sometimes it will overcook, it, 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 and which is not a bad thing. It's good to have some... Um, you know, different textures in your meat, but it's kind of a bad thing sometimes um, because it'll overcook and it just comes flavorless. So what I found is, is by doing this method, it kind of makes things even. Putting the vegetables on the inside will actually make these fajitas um, stay tender. It kind of bastes them from the inside out, if that makes sense. Um, and then I'm taking uh, toothpicks here and kind of stitching these together. Um, I'll leave this one right here so you can see me and I'll do this. Sorry, I wasn't being very clear as I was doing it. I was more worried about how much I had put on there. It looked like I had put too much uh, vegetable on there. And I don't know if you guys have seen some of my videos before. I, I tend to go overboard with uh, what I put into stuff sometimes and uh, I have to be careful. Like this one's gonna be a little bit tougher, but we'll get it. 
We will get it, I promise. Same thing with this one. We're gonna use toothpicks. I'm just drawing the meat together on the sides. I'm pinching it. And using these toothpicks to kind of stitch this together. Uh, one of the things, you could tie this up. If you guys have watched our videos before on my stuffed pork loins here, um, the, the, how I do a stuffed pork loin, you may have seen me tie. You can tie these up if you feel like it. Um, it's completely up to you. Just remember whatever you do, or remember whatever you don't do is, is don't leave these toothpicks in and don't leave you know that rope on and serve it to your guest. All right, number three. Number three looks like it's got too much stuff in it. That's okay. This is live cooking. We don't have a kitchen. We don't have prep chefs back there in the back. We don't have recipe makers. All of, the, all of what you see comes out of my trials at home and stuff that you won't see is stuff that I've thought up in my head that I've tried and just like, wow, that was some of the worst stuff I've ever cooked in my life. We keep that content buried in, buried in the vault. So, all right. So there we go. That is how I uh, prepare my beef fajitas uh, for the smoker. Now, the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, we're gonna put these into a pan with a rack. I'm gonna uh, do that here off camera. Um, why? Because I forgot the rack. And like I said, we don't have a prep chef or prep crew setting this thing up. But I'm gonna cook these elevated. I'm gonna put a rack in a pan and cook these elevated. That's so we can get that heat circulating around, that convection heat going around it. We can get that smoke around it. And that way we get a 365 degree uh, cook instead of like a 270 degree cook on here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pop these into a pan with, with a grid on it um, so we can raise this up off the pan. I'm gonna throw these into a smoker here, probably set at about 275 degrees. Cherry, hickory, and maple is what we're gonna use today to cook with. So we'll catch you guys here in a little bit down at the smoker. All right, we got the uh, fajitas that we just did uh, in the kitchen upstairs, ready to go into our Traeger smoker. Uh, she's rocking, rolling. We're gonna cook about 275 degrees, 250, 275. Go ahead and get these in. Uh, probably going to take about an hour to come out here and check. What we're shooting for is a medium rare temperature in the uh, thickest part of the meat. So, speaking uh, of do, let's go ahead and get them in there, get some smoke on them, and uh, we'll come back and check on them in about an hour. All right, folks, I uh, removed our fajitas from the smoker. You see, we got this beautiful golden, like, uh, I should say golden, this mahogany color on these from the smoke. Uh, they're tender, uh, they're juicy, they're ready to go. But I want to do one more step I'm going to share with you. This is one of the things that I like to do on some of my foods, and it's called a reverse sear. I like to smoke it at first, and then I like to throw it on a really intense hot heat to finish it off. Basically, it'll crisp off any of the proteins and stuff on the outside and just kind of sear it and give it a nice kind of grill flavor as long, uh, along with that smoky flavor. So I'll take you guys over here. What I've got here is just an ordinary chimney. And these are what we use to light our, our fires with in, in competition barbecue and in grilling. Um, it's loaded up some Royal Oak competition uh, charcoal in here. And I've got a simple grill grate on top. And I, it's got probably, if we were to test that grill right now, it's probably in around 900 degrees, 1000 degrees, really, really hot. So it's just kind of vortex that comes up. It's going to do it really fast and really quick. So let's go ahead and get these on. I will do these with a uh, set of tongs because, like I said, it is very hot. And you stick your hand here and you're all right. You stick your hand here, but you stick your hand up here and you can actually feel it coming up. I mean, it's incredible kind of how that works. We'll get these on each side. Um, give them probably about 30 seconds on each side and we'll just give them a little flip, a little, really it won't be a flip, it's just gonna be a little roll.
I just really want to reach my hand in there and it's really hot. That's what I was wanting to do. Austin onion. The idea behind this is, it's like I said, it kind of draws out some of the flavor on the inside, put some of the, the outside to the inside. And this right here just kind of crisps it up and gives it like another layer, another, another layer of texture, another layer of flavor. So one more. Let's see, one more. Another 30 seconds and then we'll take those off and those will be ready to go upstairs and slice. Smells amazing. Like I said, we had talked about this when we were preparing these. How uh, I, I love going down the midway at the fairs and smelling those those onions and peppers, you know, cooking with the kielbasa sausage, and that's what we're getting out here with this. So I think we're about done. Go ahead and get these off. We're gonna get these upstairs, get these cut, get them plated, try them, see how we did. We'll catch you guys upstairs. All right, folks, we are back upstairs. We have got our fajitas done, um, almost. One final step to do before we eat them. Uh, let's recap where we, how we got to this stage. We started out day one, we started out by getting our skirt steak, coating it with canola oil, and then applying our Redneck Barbecue Lab competition rub on here, the all-purpose rub that we use. Um, you can find this rub at www.theredneckbarbecuelab.com. Find our sauce. Uh, you can see all where it's located locally, as well as some of the local purveyors that can handle your online orders. Um, after we applied that rub to it, we let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. Uh, we took some poblano peppers and onions. Uh, we made them into a quarter inch strips. We, we put a little oil on them, put some uh, additional Redneck Barbecue Lab competition rub on them. Um, we smoked them a little bit before, like 30, 45 minutes before we took the skirt steak. We cut it up into three pieces, manageable pieces. We put the onions and the peppers inside. We rolled it up and we put in toothpicks to kind of stitch it together. As you see right here, it holds it together. We put it on our smoker. We smoked it about an hour and a half. We pulled it off of the smoker and then we reverse seared it. And reverse sear means we did something kind of low and slow on some smoke and then we put it off on some intense heat to kind of finish it off, to caramelize the outside and to kind of give it a grill flavor on top of that already smoky flavor. Made a, uh, some tortillas that we put on the grill, made a simple pico de gallo. We have our green goddess sauce here that if you guys don't know what this is, it's the redneck green goddess sauce. It's a jalapeno, garlic, cilantro, guacamole type sauce that we've made here on our YouTube videos that you may or may not have seen. If you haven't, stay tuned. It will be coming out. And if you have seen it, now you can kind of see an application besides um, the vegan one that we did before um, with it. So let me show you how I uh, do these for my guests. The first thing that I want to do is I want to remove the toothpicks out of it. Be very careful to remove them. Um, the toothpicks uh, just kind of hold it together. You could use twine on this. It's completely up to you guys. It's not a, you know, there's not one way um, that's the right way. It's just your way, how you want to do it. Um, one of the things when we did roll this up, we rolled this up with the grain running this way. So when we slice it, we are slicing it against the grain. That's very important. Make sure when you roll this up, the grain is running perpendicular to where your cut is. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these up um, into pieces. It's taking our time. The texture of these is, is very much like steak. Um, but it's, it's like smoked steak. And then the peppers and the onions, like I said, just kind of accompaniment. And also they add to the uh, moisture on the inside of the steak itself when it's cooking. So these sliced up, some of these up, get them sliced up. Man, it smells unbelievable. The poblano pepper mixing in with that onion and that steak, that smokiness of that steak. It's just like, wow, 
combination flavor I can't wait to try. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get a little bit onto here. A little bit probably more than I need, but it's quite enough. I've got a little pico that I made here, pico de gallo. I know that's not a traditional topping um, for this, but it's one that I like. Going to give me a little bit of lime juice, fresh lime in there. I do like the, the fresh lime on this. A little squeeze of that, fresh lime. That's another thing that we talked about how we use fresh when we're finishing a dish off versus sometimes I'll use the bottle when I'm cooking. I can't really tell the difference. And then finally, the last thing that I want to put on this taco to try it is this green goddess sauce that we have here. It's going to add a background flavor, sweet, uh, salty, and a little of the heat. So um, that may not be the traditional looking taco. It's really not the taco that you find at these stores here in America, you know, in the crispy shells and stuff, uh, Yokiro. Um, but this is their redneck uh, fajita taco that uh, I'm unfortunately about to dive into and you guys can't right now. So let's see how we did. Mm. It's really, 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 really tender. The steak itself, you see, this is a steak that's very dry and it just pulls apart. There's no resistance, falls apart in your mouth. You can see, I'm going to get my friend Mr. Baker to go on the overhead. If you look on here, you can see the red ring around it. That's what the traditional smokers and barbecue, barbecue people say is that smoke ring, and it's indicative of some smoke penetrating. That's true and not true. That's a sign of our rub, that nitrate kind of going into that meat. That's what we had talked about, about forming that pellicle. And this lets us know that we had some penetration, that leaving it overnight, taking that extra step to do it, did reap the benefits. And the benefits is this beef is beefy, but it's smoky and it's got this grill component on the backside that's just unbelievable. I would sit here and talk all day about this, but I tell you what, I'd rather be eating it. So with that being said, I'm Jerry Stevenson. I am the chief redneck in charge at theredneckbarbecuelab.com. We're here in the RBL studios with my friend, Mike Baker, who's salivating over there once again, just waiting for me just to quit yapping so he can come over here and sample of this. Event webcasting is what's putting this on. You guys are the reason we do this. Please go to this video, like this video, subscribe, because I already know you're subscribing to this channel, and click that bell. Share this with your friends, show them this. You guys, take this, man. Just use it as incentive. Get together and have a party, a safe party right now, unfortunately, but get together and have a party. Cook with your kids, put this out. Make it where everybody can enjoy it. Come together, you know, spread some kindness, spread some love, spread some smiles. We appreciate you folks. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.